Hi everybody, on today's episode of Beach House Garage, we're going to be doing transmission flush. We're going to be swapping out the gear oil. So what you're going to recommend is something full synthetic uh, gear oil. Uh, we're going to be using Valvoline. Uh, Send power, 7590 weight. This is pretty much what a Mark IVs use uh, for their transmissions, for a manual transmission. Get that right. Okay. Uh, you're going to need a couple tools. Uh, you're going to need a 17 millimeter Allen bit right here. You need to locate the holes for it. Uh, there's one on the front of the transmission and one on the bottom. I'll show you where they're at in just a minute. Get your car off the air. You need about, about at least a foot off the ground. Um, you need a drain pan because you got to catch all the fluid once it's dri dripping out. And then a couple rags so you can clean the mess up just in case if you make a mess. <laughs> First things first, get your car in the air, jack it up. Um, now we're going to find the drain plug, which is down below. I'm blank out there for a moment. <laughs> and I'm going to point with it with my ratchet so you guys can see it better. But it's right here. Right there. So, let me move this over a little bit. This car has an oil leak that I'm not going to fix because I have a new motor coming. So I'm not going to bother with it. So once you get that nice and loose, put this down below. Now, I just drove the car, so the transmission is nice and hot. Ugh, and it stinks so bad. Can you give me a rag, Colleen? Ugh, I hate the smell of gear oil. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Ugh. There's nothing else stinkier in a mark and evoke in a, any car in general other than gear oil. Gear oil smells like freaking rotten eggs, it's freaking gross. This is not a, this is not a rag. This isn't. It's dirty. It's not a rag, it's for polishing. It's on the dirty thing. It's not. I just left it there. Yeah, I got a steady little oil leak here. It drips probably about three or four drips a day, maybe five. Nothing crazy, but yeah, it does leak though, unfortunately. And it's leaking from the front uh, or the rear main seal. Um, So now that you see where the um, drain plug is at and draining, I'm going to show you where the fill is. Right there. Pretty straightforward, nothing hard. Same bit, you're going to actually uh, unbolt that and then wait until the transmission drains as much as you can drain out of it. Wasn't that dirty, I'm pretty impressed. On my phone, Let me see if I can. There we go. So, on that, now we get this one. Off. 
Don't worry about any fluid coming out of here. Nothing comes out of here because it's coming out over there on the other side, so don't freak out. Make sure they keep the drain plugs separate from each other because they are, um, I'm not going to say specific to the side, but they wear specifically, so try to keep them apart as best you can. So clean off the inside of them. Just clean off as much as you can. Try to prevent as much debris as possible. Ah. Now, this is a good time if you go on ECS tuning. Before you do this DIY, you can order the magnetic drain one. Um, that's a good thing to have because if it's, you know... If you get any metal chips or shavings inside over time, it'll pick it all up. It's a cheap upgrade. It's like, I think, 10 bucks for the drain plug. And it'll last pretty much the lifetime of the car. Or if you ever decide to replace the uh, transmission, just move it over to the next transmission. It's pretty easy. So now our transmission is starting to drip. Okay. Uh, the transmission uses three quarts of uh, fluid. Um, so, or what I say, two to fill. So you put two in, and then you start dumping the third one in, and then eventually it'll start spilling out, and that's when you stop it. And we'll show you how it's done, but that's just usually what, usually what I say is two, and then three to fill. Um, the third one, the way you do it is that you add, you add two quarts, and then once it starts spewing out of the fill port here, um, on top, right here, once it starts spilling out, you're full. That's it. You can't go any more than that. That's as much as you can add to it. Usually you want to do it in a more level area. I'm kind of level. I kind of jacked it up pretty high, so I'm hoping all the fluids will be coming out of it. Since this leaks oil, um, I give it a little cleaning just to be safe to make sure it's only dripping from that one place. And my trail always leads to this one spot right here, and it only comes out of this part right here, so I know it's the rear main seal seeping a little bit. So once you're done with that, and it starts to drip really slowly. Put your plug back in. And just give it a nice little tighten down there. Nothing crazy. Clean your area up, and that way if it starts to leak, you know where it's leaking from. Always try to clean your area as best you can. Now here comes the fun part, how to fill that hole, because your container is this. You can't just dump it in there, and it won't work. So I'll show you guys a cool little trick. So here's the next tool you're going to need. You're going to need to get a half inch hose, about two feet long, and a nice thin funnel, like that. That's how we're going to feed it from the top. We're not going to do this from underneath anymore. So now that you have the um, funnel and the feed in place, just feed it like normal down below. I went in there and just pushed it in. Just make sure it fits in there. Um, you're going to get your first quart of gear oil, and this is so you can do it at home, you guys, by yourself, without a buddy. 
Um, make sure you slide your pen over so you guys can make sure when you start spilling fluid you don't spill on the floor you spill inside the pan so now with your funnel in place and you let gravity do its job pretty much just pour and fill it's a very slow process because the uh, gear oil is really really thick so you gotta make sure you just take your time and pour it And then from here, you can see once you start filling it too much, it'll start spilling over. But right now, this is just one quart, so it's not going to spill over. Just take your time. There's no rush to this, guys. And on top of that, if you rush it and you start spilling gear oil, oh my gosh, this stuff smells so bad. Like right now, I can barely deal with the smell, but I'm dealing with it. So, you know, got to do it. And the reason why we're doing this because we're making a big trip to Santa Cruz. So I want to make sure at least, you know, the vital parts of my car. Um, are safe you know I'm not having any issues with overheating right now I think I just found a coolant leak on my radiator but like I said this car is kind of thrash so there's gonna be a couple of things we're gonna repair later down the road and number one is a radiator but we're not gonna go cheap on the radiator we're gonna go to a nice high performance radiator since we're gonna go a bigger motor I mean not bigger motor but a big turbo setup So here's quart number three. Now remember I told you it's not going to use all three quarts. So keep an eye because you're going to start making a mess down below. And once you start seeing it spill over, you're going to pull your drain out and start, I mean pull your funnel out and then start um, put the plug in. And I think I just started spilling. Yep. I see it now. It's starting to drip. So I'm going to put a couple more, a little bit more in here, just because I know once I take the, that piece out, it's going to start spilling over. So that's done. So now I'm going to go back down below, and you'll see right here, it's starting to spill. So you want to get your your drain plug ready because it's going to make a mess once you pull this out. So get yourself situated well enough that you don't have a mess. Let's see here. I'm just trying to figure out an easy way for me to... This is what I mean by it spills out, and that's okay. That means you're at the right amount.
once you get that done, nice and tight. Same procedure as the other side, just give it a nice good tug and you're good. And that everybody is how we swap, I mean refresh our transmission fluid. I don't know what was done to this car so to play it safe might as well just do it and be safe with it. You're done. You're set for another 30 to 40,000 miles on manual transmissions. You want to do this as often as you can just because if you daily it a lot, then maintenance is just key. It's just this is all preventative care, guys. Nothing that, you know, if you don't have the money to do it, don't do it now. I mean, do it later. It's not going to ruin your car, but you always want to do it because it gives you smoother shifting. It definitely makes the shift feel a lot smoother. Uh, and you're just going to preserve the life of your transmission for just another couple years to come, you know. You just want this car to be solid. I mean, I love Mark IVs and I want to keep my Mark IV forever. So that's why I made a clone. <laughs> I cloned him and he's mine. All mine. So thank you guys for watching today's episode of Pinchel's Garage. And subscribe. I'll put a subscribe button somewhere around here, you know, hit the subscribe, you know, invite your friends, you know, tell them that, you know, that you know someone that knows Volkswagen stuff and, you know, you like doing it and, you know, hit a comment down below. I'd like to hear from you guys and see if you guys have, have any suggestions or maybe some better ways to do my videos. I don't know. This is what I've been doing forever. I think it works for me. Just as my, it's just my style. I'm not supposed to be a pro. I'm supposed to be the average Joe, you know, and you guys are with me. You guys are average Joes with me, and I want you guys to be with me all the way. So thanks again, everybody, for watching this episode of Bean Child's Garage. See you guys later, and happy modding. And as always, brake, fix, and repeat.